When you go out to a website where you might be giving uh, credentials or credit card information, maybe like a bank or an e-commerce site, do you know the IP address of that site? I certainly don't know the IP address of my bank, so what I do is I use the domain name system, or DNS, to resolve a fairly easy-to-remember domain name into a not-so-easy-to-remember IP address. However, what if a malicious user convinced us to go to their DNS server instead of our legitimate DNS server? If that were to happen, then they could redirect us to their web server that might look like our bank or our e-commerce site, and we give our credentials or credit card information to that fake site, and suddenly they have our information. Hi, my name is Kevin Wallace, and in this video, we want to discuss this type of attack, which is called DNS spoofing. We'll see how an attacker might launch such an attack, and we'll talk about how we can defend against this attack. And DNS spoofing, that's a topic appearing on the CEH, the Certified Ethical Hacker Exam Blueprint. So if you're preparing for that exam to be a certified ethical hacker, you'll want to know how DNS spoofing works. Or if you're just concerned about better protecting your enterprise environment from DNS spoofing, this is the video for you. And we're going to begin by taking a look at an overview of DNS spoofing. We will walk through a hypothetical example, and then we'll see how an attacker might set it up. We'll go in to Kali Linux, and using Apache, we're going to set up a fake website that is going to say evil site when we land on it. And we're going to configure a utility that an attacker might use called EdderCap. And we'll see how they might use that to perform a DNS spoofing attack. And then we're going to verify that the DNS spoofing attack was successful. And if you enjoy this video and find it valuable, please do me a huge favor and click on like. Also subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our future content. And since we are dealing with a utility that could be used for bad purposes, I want to make my intent very clear. The content that you're about to see is from our professional ethical hacking course. And I encourage you to not use this knowledge in any unauthorized way. I am performing the following demonstration on my local equipment that I personally own. And this channel definitely does not endorse or encourage malicious or illegal activity using hacking tools. In fact, it's just the opposite. I want to show you how to protect yourself against these type of attacks. And this DNS spoofing attack can be defeated using a couple of utilities we talked about in a prior video here on the channel called DHCP Attacks and Defense Strategies. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description. So after you watch this video, you may want to go through that other video where I set up the defense strategies. In that video, we show you how to set up a couple of features called Port Security and DHCP Snooping. And those are the features we could use to prevent a DNS spoofing attack, as we'll talk about in this video. And I'm not sure when you're watching this video, but if you happen to be watching it before September 28th, 2022, then I would like to invite you to a completely free deep dive training session that we're doing. It's going to be on Wednesday, September 28th, 2022. It's going to be at 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And Eastern Daylight Time is UTC-4. To sign up for this completely free deep dive event, which I believe is going to be our longest deep dive ever, we're going to cover a ton of security topics. Just go to kwtrain.com slash cyber. Again, that's kwtrain.com slash cyber. Now, let's get into this week's video on DNS spoofing. In this video, let's consider an attack called a DNS spoofing attack. This is known by another name. It's also known as a DNS cache poisoning attack. To begin, let's review how DNS functions. We've got this laptop on screen, and let's say it wants to go to kwtrain.com out on the internet. But it doesn't know the IP address of the kwtrain.com web server. So that laptop is going to go ask its DNS server, hey, can you tell me the IP address corresponding to the name of kwtrain.com? The DNS server receives that, and it responds with a message saying, yeah, that's at 203.0.113.54. That goes back to the laptop, and the laptop is going to cache that for a period of time locally. And now when it wants to go to kwtrain.com, it knows the corresponding IP address that can be routed out to the internet. However, let's say an attacker wants to put up a lookalike page. They have a web server, and they want to make it look like kwtrain.com. So when somebody goes to log into kwtrain.com, they'll actually be logging in to the attacker's website. Let's say the attacker attaches a web server with an IP address of 172.16.101.150. But the question is, how can that attacker cause the victim's laptop 
to go to the attacker's web server. Well, one option is they might connect a rogue DHCP server to the network, as we previously discussed. If the victim's laptop learns IP address information from that rogue DHCP server, it might learn the IP address of a DNS server, which is actually a DNS server set up by the attacker, which is going to direct the victim to the attacker's web server when the victim is attempting to go to kwtrain.com. And another option that I don't have listed here is if the attacker gains access to the victim's laptop, they could update the local host's file on that laptop that's going to take precedence over any DNS lookup. But assuming the attacker does not have access to the victim's laptop, something else they could do, and that's what we're going to demonstrate in this video, is DNS cache poisoning. With DNS cache poisoning, the attacker might be running utilities such as EaterCap or EtterCap, depending on how you want to pronounce that. And if they first launch a man-in-the-middle attack, as we previously demonstrated with EtterCap, traffic flowing between the victim's laptop and the DNS server is going to flow through the attacker if the attacker specifies the victim's laptop as one target and the DNS server as another target. So now when the victim's laptop tries to resolve the IP address for kwtrain.com, it's going to go to the attacker, who's going to respond with a message saying, oh yeah, kwtrain.com, that's at 172.16.1. 1.150. Their fake web server that is set up as a lookalike web server to kwtrain.com attempting to capture the login credentials of the victim. Now let's go out to a live topology and see how an attacker might pull off a DNS spoofing or as it's also known a DNS cache poisoning attack. And here we are sitting on our Kali Linux box. This is going to be the attacker's machine we're pretending. And we're going to set up, just as a basic example, a fake kwtrain.com website on this machine, just to demonstrate that we could redirect DNS queries looking for kwtrain.com. We could divert those to another site. So we're not going to go through the process of setting up a lookalike site. I'm just going to set up a basic page so we know that, yep, our traffic has been diverted. First, let's see what the IP address is on this Kali box. Let's go open up a terminal, and I'll say ifconfig, and it looks like our IP address is 192.168.1.102. Now, let's start the Apache web server on this machine. To do that, I'll do a sudo service apache2 start, and I'll give my super user password. And just to demonstrate that this page is up and functioning, let's go over to the victim's laptop and directly point to 192.168.1.102. Here on the victim's laptop, let's go to 192.168.1.102. We'll press enter, and that is the default web page for our Apache 2 server. Now let's go back to our Kali box and really quickly change that page to something that we create. So back on our Kali box, I'm going to CD into slash var slash www slash html. Let's list the files in this directory. I'm going to edit this index.html file. In fact, let's move this to a backup file and I'll create a brand new index.html file. Let's do a sudo move index.html to index-old.html. And now let's create our own index.html. I'll do a sudo and I'll use the VI editor. You can use whatever editor you like on Kali Linux. And I'll say index.html. And I'm going to make this super basic. I'll press I to insert, and then I'll give a bold tag, and I'll say evil site, exclamation point. Then I'll do a slash B to close out the bold tag, and that's it. I'll do an escape, colon, WQ to write and quit. Let's make sure that file does exist. It's readable by everyone, awesome. And to confirm this web page is showing up on our victim's laptop, let's go back over to the victim's laptop and let's reload 192.168.1.102. And it comes back and it says evil site. And now that we have our evil site set up, let's discuss how we can use EtterCap to resolve DNS queries coming from our victim's laptop wanting to get the IP address of kwtrain.com. Then EtterCap is going to respond to the DNS query with a reply saying, that its address is 192.168.1.102, the address of our Kali box. Now, before launching EtterCap, we've got some work to do on a couple of the EtterCap configuration files. So let's go back to our Kali box and let's go into the Etsy slash EtterCap directory. And we need to edit both the 
configuration or CUNF file and the editor.dns file. First, let's edit this configuration file. We'll do a sudo vi editor.cunf. And the first thing I want to do is to give EdderCat permissions to do what we want it to do. And to do that, I need to change this user ID and this group ID. I'm going to change those to zeros. So I'll delete those values. Insert a zero. Delete those values. Insert a zero. And next, there are a few lines that I need to uncomment, meaning I need to get rid of the pound sign in front of them that makes them a comment. You see, the lines I want to uncomment are specific to the operating system that we're running on. Now, I'm running on Kali Linux, so I want to uncomment the lines for Linux. To jump down to that configuration section, I'll do an escape forward slash Linux. And I've got these four lines I want to remove the pound sign from. So I'll get rid of that pound sign and this one. Common mistake here, you also need to get rid of the pound signs in front of the IP version 6 lines that are commented out. So I got rid of those four different pound signs. Let's do an escape, colon, WQ. And now I need to edit that editor.dns file. So I'll do a sudo vi editor.dns. And I'm going to go down to the very bottom of this. You can read through this if you'd like more information on how to do the formatting. But to get to the very bottom, I'll do an escape, then a shift G. I'll do an O to add a new line. And I'll say kwtrain.com, and I'll make this an A record. So I'll do a tab, capital A. And I'll say, if you want to go to kwtrain.com, go to 192.168.1.102, which is the address of this Kali box. Next, I'll say star.kwtrain.com. This is also an A record. And we'll say go to 192.168.1.102. And let's do one other line. I'll do www.kwtrain.com. This time, it's a pointer record, PTR. And it's going to go to 192.168.1.102. Escape, colon, right quit. And we're done. And before running EdderCap, let's make sure that our laptop is getting to the actual web page that we want. So let's go back to our victim's laptop again. And I'm going to go to www.kwtrain.com. And there's my web page. Perfect. And in this example, as is often the case, the victim's laptop is using its default gateway as its DNS server. And its default gateway is 192.168.1.1. And like we did in a previous video, we want to do an ARP poisoning attack on traffic going between the victim's laptop and that gateway. Let's see what the victim's laptop IP address is. Let's do an IF config. And it looks like it's 192.168.1.105. So let's go back over to our Kali box and under the menu, under sniffing and spoofing, I'll say EdderCap graphical, give the root password, I'll accept that. Let's select our targets and the targets are going to be the victim's laptop and the default gateway, which is acting as the DNS server. So under this EdderCap menu, I'm going to say targets, select targets. And I'll say that the IP address of my victim's laptop is 192.168.1.105. And my other target is the default gateway, which is acting as that client's DNS server. It's at 192.168.1.1. And I think we're good there. Let's say OK. We've got our targets selected. Let's do our ARP poisoning attack. Under the man in the middle menu, I'll select ARP poisoning. And we'll say OK. Now let's do our DNS cache poisoning. To do that, I'm going to go back to this EdderCap menu and I'm going to go to Plugins, Manage Plugins, and I'm going to double click DNS spoof. Now let's go back to the victim's laptop and try to go to kwtrain.com once again. We'll go to the victim's laptop and I'm going to go specifically to HTTP. Now my website is actually HTTPS and that's a great protection from an attack like this, but I'm going to specify HTTP colon slash slash kwtrain.com and let's see what happens. I try to go to kwtrain.com and it takes me to dum 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 the evil site that we set up. And let's think about how we might protect ourselves from an attack like this. 
Well, we launched an ARPA poisoning attack to pull off the DNS cache poisoning attack. So we could go back to when we were talking about ARPA poisoning and we could protect ourselves using something like the DHCP snooping feature, or we might use the port security feature where we only allow specific MAC addresses on specific ports. And back on my Kali box, let's turn off all of these attacks. But that's a look at how an attacker might launch a DNS spoofing attack, also known as a DNS cache poisoning attack. 